Ready, steady, go. What was that from? Ready, steady, go. Gladiators, are you ready? I thought gladiators was not Scottish. No, no, is it? Gladiators, are you ready? So Why did you talk like that? <laughs> gladiators. Why? I don't understand I'm, it. I'm, I just don't get it. It's every time I do it, you Gladiators you're... with your tongue halfway out your mouth. Gladiators. You can keep repeating it. It doesn't make it any better. I'm trying to, you, I'm trying to do it and you're not letting me. Okay. Gladiators, are you ready? I didn't say are you ready. Again, I ready, I a... steady, go. No. Like you're doing a run at school, a race. I know. This ready, was a... steady, go. Th that's a school race. Yeah. This is a gladiator TV show. Gladiators. No, it isn't. We're doing a podcast and you just won't stop doing a Scottish <laughs> accent. No, let me do it for you. And then once you hear it, you'll know exactly what it is. You ready? Gladiators, are you ready? Sophie. Go on my first whistle. Jamie, go on my... Why are you sound like you're Jamaican now? <laughs> and also, I don't know what it is. I've never watched Gladiators and I'm never going to. Gladiators, are you ready? It's TV shows back in the day. Gladiators, wasn't that like the movie with the Scottish, the Irish guy who I fancy? <laughs> Scottish Irish. Gerard Butler. Oh, yeah, Gerard Butler. Isn't Scot that gladiator? He's not Irish. He's Scottish. Whatever it is, he's gorgeous. Hey, uh, there was an article that came out in the media about you and I. I know exactly what it is. So according to body language analysis, the couple most likely to split up in 2023 is Jamie Lang and Sophie Habu. We are both crossing our legs away. From, well, mine's towards you, yours is away from me. <laughs> the article continued to say, honestly, I'm really not okay with this. The pair are due to get married soon. However, they've been ranked at the top most likely to split by the end of the year with 15.9% chance of lasting according to their body language. We have just under 16% chance to survive. Yeah, because of our body language. We don't like to touch. All right, well, what do you want me to do? Oh, no. Ooh, We're not very tactile. I you am tactile with you. No, 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 no. Yes, what you yes, like yes. to do is get very close into my face. Like, Jamie has no social awareness of how close his breath and face <laughs> is to someone else's face. And I don't want to go back and talk to breath. I don't want to talk about breaths. Well, don't I don't to. want to go back for steps. Well, you're, you're, the one, you, you're the one who's From the about. day I have met you, I remember thinking, whoa, this boy... Right up close in my face. Yeah. To all no... my friends, Bella walks in right up close into her face. Melissa, right up close into her face. Probably Jack, right up close into his face. You're right up in my freaking face right now. I that. never do. Get all right. Clear. Well, thank God you don't. Sophie, Sophie and I ordered Lebanese the other night and you still smell of Lebanese last night. No, no. I don't. I wore the same jumper <laughs> because I'm economical and I didn't want to... <laughs> I didn't want to wash my jumper for no reason. So I put my jumper on to go to bed. Oh, you stink of Lebanese. I was like, have you smelt yourself? You keep lamb kofters in the fridge for four days. They reek. Like the smell is unbearable. <laughs> Economical, is, is that the... I, I, I'm, I, Economical. I don't, Economical? I, I don't know what it is. Sustainable. Economical. All right, well, should we just begin the episode? Let's begin it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> I'm not pointing at anyone. So I did my time. No, 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 and no. I no, get no. to sit back and relax. No, everyone loved laughter, laughed, laughed. They laughed and loved. <laughs> they laughed. They really loved last episode. Because they're fed up of hearing you yapping on that. I'm not work. yapping on anywhere. We're having a lovely little chat together and it was really fun and exciting. And I think you it should... It was not fun and exciting. These words just come out of your mouth. It's like you're on a script. It was just... A chat. It was not fun and exciting. Yes, I know, but it was still fun and exciting, right? What was fun and exciting about our chat last week? Uh, lots of different things. We chatted about loads of stuff that was great. Cool. Tell me some. Uh, we chatted about the fact that you like me stroking your bum at night. I don't like you. It was a lie that you once again told on the podcast. So you don't like me stroking your bum? No, I like my back to be stroked. Really? I like anything to be stroked, like stroke my finger. <laughs> I just like to be touched at all times. <laughs> Truly. My favourite thing is to be squeezed. Like, I like tension on me. <laughs> if I could buy myself a blood pressure machine, I would just have it on every part of my body and just... 
Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you would buy the blood pressure machine and just keep it on you in every part of your body. Yeah, it's the, there's no better feeling. There's no better feeling. There's no better feeling than a sex with me. A doctor grabbing my foot and going, "Does this hurt?" Like, yeah, do it harder. You're tripling. I love it. No, my favorite thing. No, I didn't. You sicko. I the my favorite thing that Jamie does that I ask him to do is squeeze my eyebrows. Just try it at home. Like honestly, they're listening. (laughs) Jack, our producers are squeezing his eyebrows. (laughs) Oh, that is or squeeze your chin just anything <laughs> really squeeze it hard and it's just so nice Sophie goes to bed earlier than me uh, we normally sleep with a fan on in the side of the room that's what we normally do because there's like a fan and, yeah. and Sophie can't now sleep without this fan noise in the room so she doesn't like it and I came up into the room and the fan wasn't on in the room it's been moved it's been moved the fan's moved and I was like what the hell anyway there was this noise which I can only describe sounded like a generator. <laughs> sounded <laughs> like a generator. It's like, what the hell is that noise coming from the bedroom? I look over Sophie's phone. I turn over Sophie's phone. <laughs> Sophie has got a YouTube video up of fan noises. <laughs> ten hours. I wake up. Like- it's a ten hour fan noise. Well, I'm obviously not alone. And, because- and the video. Do you know what the video is? What is the video of? A fan. Going- <laughs> It's one of those white shit little plastic fans just going. It does. Honestly, I couldn't see. And I was like, oh, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. And I knew where the fan was, but it was just a little bit too effort to unplug it, carry it up, plug it back in. So I was like, fan noise. Googled it. Apparently, loads of people do it. It's called white noise. Yeah. I have it because of my tinnitus. I do that. Well, there you go. Thank you. Thank me later. No, I I can sleep without a fan. You like it. I can also feel it coming out of the phone. I was like, <laughs> I shit, no. I shit you not. The duvet was going. <laughs> I'm like, where is this coming from? There isn't a fan. And I kept getting such a nice breeze. And I was like, but the fan isn't there, Sophie. Honey, that is not true at all. It is. No, it's not. What about you freaking out so much at the shadow of my dress hanging out the other night? <laughs> that, that was scary. I what do you do bit... every night before you go to bed? Check under the bed. Guys, this isn't a joke. Jamie checks under the bed. Yeah. Every night. Because yes. there's a the boogeyman's there. Yeah, he does a barpy. <laughs> the first time I noticed you looking under the bed, we went to a restaurant and there were these two scary kids. Um, God. <laughs> yeah, so explain it. We're not going to call them what we call them. You can if you want it's to. It's discriminating. It's- <laughs> <laughs> so they were just they had ginger hair <laughs> but not... now we now we have a thing where we're like the ginger kids the ginger kids because... there were these scary children who like kept being no, they a bit were, weird there was something really bad going on like you know the movie The Shining yeah it was like The, the others, Shining yeah. they like could see ghosts in this restaurant they kept just walking around and going to the bathroom they were honestly about eight and then they would go outside I thought they were ghosts like something was so weird <laughs> the point where Jamie was like don't forget the main we're leaving I was like are you joking <laughs> we had to leave a restaurant because two eight year old kids scared us too much <laughs> he lies in bed at night and starts hugging me and whispering in my ear the ginger kids <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes I just worry that they found us what Sophie and I'm sorry like, if, you if, don't need to shout okay. <laughs> okay so anyway we go home we mi- we didn't eat our main course so we go home we got really I'm starving i'm furious we're ordering delivery and jamie goes and turns on the lights in every <laughs> single room and then goes up into the wardrobe looks in all the wardrobe mm. and looks under the bed bearing in mind they're still in the restaurant <laughs> And from that with night, their family. with their mum and dad, eating, they are eight years old twin kids. I still know. I'm, I'm still convinced they were ghosts. Like something was up, and when I mean up, I mean up. <laughs> anyway, from that from that night on, which I can tell you now was December last year, because I remember it was just before I went to a girls' Christmas lunch. You have looked How under the bed because I remember. I, I think I bowed on the Christmas lunch because I was just so upset. <laughs> Do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Why? I used to see a woman in um, black and white at the end of the bed. I thought she was a cow, and I used to say, "Mommy, why is there a cow at the end of my bed?" And it was a Victorian lady in black and white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you laughing at? <laughs> You thought, the, you thought there was a cow at the well, end. Of- I didn't know why there was this black and white figure at the end of my bed. 
That is terrifying. Terrifying. Loads of creepy things. I also slept walked every single night. I'm not possessed, but I may have been. Every single night I used to go to the third floor, which was always the haunted floor. Mm. No one went up there. It was like really friggin' scary if we went up there. And I slept every single night until we moved house. And I've never, ever, ever slept walked since. How sketchy is that? Don't think that's sketchy. So you don't think I was possessed? No. I once got into my sister's bed, pulled up the duvet and went, they're following us. Ah, and ran as though I was a ghost. And my sister like couldn't go near me for a month. She was like, she's possessed. <laughs> Terrifying. You also told me a very funny story this week. What? Uh, we were we were talking about you and you you were saying, oh God, when I was 18 years old, I had like a really perky bum and I was like this and that. And you were talking about when you just went to university. And I said to you, do you think you were really fit at university? And you looked at me and you went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. And then you said, then he said, I was on a night out once. And no, 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 yeah. no, no. He said, I was on a night out once. And and I heard, I heard the boys talking. <laughs> I had no, the, no, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. I heard the boys talking in the next door loo. And they were no. going, and, and they were going, Sophie Boo's out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I, you know, <laughs> no, at first was, you almost shout like cubicles. I heard someone go, Sophie Boo's out tonight. And I was like, I made it. I made it. <laughs> All went downhill from there. Fuck's sake. So you had it once. You only had it once. Well, yeah, I did go every night and hear boys saying the same thing. It'd be quite weird. But you never heard that about girls. They were like, oh my God, who's that little tiny blonde boy following as well? Who's that blonde bloke in the corner of that room at all the after parties? I, how do you know I'd be like that? Because I know your friends told me. So what happened was Jamie was really young, didn't know anyone. He somehow like bumped into his now best man, sat outside some steps in Leeds and... Toby very kindly said, do you want to have lunch with me? And then Jamie latched on like the little latcher he is and used to find his way back to all their after parties. And everyone at first was like, who's this bloke? And then you won them all over. Well, I think actually what happened was I was at university and I didn't know anyone at university and they were the people you in did. the... You had a girlfriend there. I, that was my first year. So first year I wasn't there. So first there. year, in a whole year you didn't make any friends. Not really. <laughs> I was just with my, with my girlfriend. I didn't even stay in halls. I didn't really know anyone. Ah, so we've got to do a quick menu for today. What's on the menu today, Soph? The menu is. <laughs> What's on the menu? So, guys, the menu is. It's yeah. coming to you fast and furious this week. Yeah. We have yeah. listeners' messages. Of course, we, we have, have that. the world's greatest chef. Yeah, possibly one of the world's greatest chefs to talk Truly. about. To talk about. Think chips. <laughs> no one knows that reference. Everything I... Ronald McDonald. What are you going to think? Ronald McDonald's dead, so it'd be worrying if we got him on. Ronald McDonald never existed. Didn't he? <laughs> you think... You think... <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you think fucking Ronald McDonald existed? Wait, wait, wait. Guys, guys, something terrible happened. My mum once dated a bloke and I knew he was a liar. He told me that he was Ronald McDonald's personal driver. He never fucking existed. I knew that man was a liar from the moment I met him. It doesn't even exist. <laughs> Ronald McDonald's a clown. <laughs> wait, who the hell's McDonald's? Created McDonald's eh? <laughs> Moving on. So, <laughs> at first, we've got listeners' messages. Yeah, then what have we got? Then we've got wedding favours. Yeah. Then we've got... No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no. Incorrect. Let us back up. <laughs> so, it's honestly... The menu's, give... meant to be, the menu's meant to be quick and simple. So, the menu was you. You were meant to do that. Okay, well... Over to you. Okay, listeners' messages. We have an exciting guest who's one of the world's greatest chefs who is potentially going to be doing our wedding menu for the actual food for our wedding and then we have what listeners messages <laughs> okay it's chaos why don't i tell you what so you're meant to do the menu this is your job this is your role this is your time to shine tell you what why don't we just go into listeners messages how about that let's go it's now time for listeners messages guys jamie mm -hmm. listeners we have a problem what do we have a problem for? a grande problem <laughs> okay grande problem ariana problem no we we are only getting messages talking about poo. And I, and I know we all love poo. Well, we know Jamie loves poo. And you, whilst, it's yours. And whilst it is very funny, 
It is rather disgusting. (laughs) And I don't want to be associated with poo for the rest of my life. Fair enough. So we're going to have to change it up. Well, no, I don't want everyone to stop writing their stories because they're funny, but I I hear what you're saying. It's more maybe send in some other fun stories about weddings or hen or stag or whatever it is because actually this week we just got a lot of poo messages. Just full poo messages. Poo, 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 poo. But we've got one that is to be kept anonymous and it is very funny, so I thought we'd share it with you. Okay, share it with me. I haven't heard this yet. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. I was on a walk with my ex and he had some real problems which he described as urgency. He would go from not needing a poo to turtle heading, needing to go instantly. <laughs> turtle heading, there are a few people who use that phrase and it need, it's illegal. So it's late stages of lockdown and we're on a lovely park walk with hot chocolates and takeaway cups. From nowhere, he suddenly yells to me that he's turtle heading. <laughs> Now, he was a very, very environmentally conscious PE teacher who would never want to harm the environment around him. So he runs to a bush to sort out his poo issues. I continue walking to avoid the embarrassment. He then sprints over to me and grabs my hand. Gross. I ask how it went and he starts pissing himself laughing. To avoid harming the environment, he had shat in his Costa cup and was (laughs) carrying his poo in his other hand. It was a large cup and you could see it curling around through the white translucent level with young children inches from it, not knowing the horrors that lay within. We all know that poo's like degradable, biodegradable. Like just shit on the floor, birds do it. That's not environmentally friendly if you ask me. And how about don't have the plastic cup and just shit on the floor? None of it adds up. Oh, God, that was brilliant. I have a voice message from Anthony O'Reilly, Jr. I haven't uh, heard this one yet, but our producer, Jack, has given it to us. Um, So this one, Anthony, it does say underneath, and I'm so sorry about this, and I promise you we will really stop these stories very soon, but he does say a poo story. (gasps) No, I forgot to tell you guys, I went to Greek Street and I go into the loo and all the girls go, move out the the way, move out the way, she needs to go for a shit. I swear (laughs) on my life. And I was like... Are you talking to me? And they were like, we know, we know, let her go, let her go before you. And I was like, no, yeah. could work quite handy. And yeah, the like Canadian that. girls came up to me in the restaurant and said, we've just seen Sophie go to the loo. Ha ha ha, she obviously needs to let her bowels out again. That's they fully sick. let me skip the queue because they were like, she much, she needs to go for a shit. Oh my God, that is genius. Okay, the perks of the podcast, Soph. We have one from... Ant- Ant- <laughs> okay, we had one from Anthony O'Reilly Jr. Hey guys, how's it going? I thought I'd send this voice message. I am from Dublin, Ireland, and I have a little poo story for you. So one day, my friend asked me to go out to our local park just to play a little bit of golf. And I said, yeah, no problem. But my stomach was feeling, it was it was upset. Okay, so we went out. We were there for about 10 minutes or so. And then I start getting a feel in my stomach. When I lifted the golf club up, everything came out. It all came out. I clenched my arse cheeks so tight, (laughs) held my arse cheeks, and literally had to run home. Now, when I ran home, the crush, I had a crush at the time, and she lived right across the road from me. She was walking towards me. So I sped past her, and she said, hello, how are you? And I said, oh, I can't talk, I have to go home. And my best friend that I know since I was younger, she came up to her and said, what's wrong with Anthony? What's wrong with him? He, he just he just ran off. He goes, oh, he shit himself. <laughs> and she never spoke to me again. I'd say hello. She'd kind of give me a hello and an awkward, you know, smile back or something like that. But yeah, it was humiliating. I love you. Oh, oh what a... I love his accent and that's just lovely. I have one from Eve, uh, which is a really lovely story. It says, hey, Jamie and Sophie, I love the podcast and it always makes me laugh out loud on my train commute to work. My fiance Matt and I are getting married next year and we love the story of how we got our wedding date and venue, so wanted to share with you. In March 2022, Matt proposed to me on a sunset whilst on a walk close to where we live. We quickly started looking at wedding venues and the first venue we found around was a beautiful castle where Henry VIII once lived, which just so happens to be an estate where we got engaged. We booked in for a tour and after walking around the majority of the venue with the wedding executive, we arrived at the chapel. The wedding executive turned and said to us, unfortunately, we're fully booked all 2023 and the beginning of 2024, which was quite saddening. She paused, then continued to say, but I should say yesterday we actually had a cancellation out of the blue. So if the May the 26th is of any interest to you, then that's newly available. 
Matt and I looked at each other at the same time and said, that's our eighth year anniversary. Wow. We grinned at each other and the executive said, oh gosh, I have tingles. And it seemed like fate. We couldn't believe it. Of all the days that became available, it was our anniversary. It seems so perfect, so we'll be getting married exactly eight years from the day we met on the estate we got engaged. That's honestly so Isn't that sweet. amazing? That's amazing. I that love stories like that. in mysterious ways. We've got an incredible Propose the Pod this week. Do you want yeah. to play it? Oh my God, Propose the Pod is amazing. You were overly excited about this. I'm overly excited because I, I, I'm a big fan. So, Proposing the Pod this week is Molly May. You're, you're a big YouTuber fan of Molly Mays. I love her YouTube. Uh, she love posed, her. She came up to us on a red carpet and said, hi, uh, you were excited. Um, and then she talked about it on her YouTube channel about being it. So Molly, if you're listening, hey, come on the podcast. Let's talk about weddings. Weddings? I meant to say babies. And then I said weddings. Weddings and babies and everything, right? Yeah, well, we would love for you to come on. So this is what Molly said on her YouTube channel. By the way, the only podcast I literally adore is nearly weds um by jamie lang and sophie habu and it is literally if you need a new podcast to listen to the whole thing is about getting married but you don't have to be getting married to enjoy that podcast i will literally be crying laughing at it sometimes and to be like crying laughing at podcasts in the car by yourself like that's that that takes honestly up. guys so i was actually asleep and jamie runs into it was like 6 a.m in the morning he runs into the bedroom as so though like uh, just someone has just given birth he was like something's gonna make you really happy i was like what is it eyes oh, peeled shut and he was like molly may listens to the podcast yes and you were excited by it right i did you did make me very happy yeah so molly proposed the pod we also have one from rebecca um who says hi sophie and jamie i just thought i would share my proposed the pod experience with you both so i work in an adult psychiatric hospital and i was talking to some patients that i work with about well-being and i was talking to them about how i like to go on walks and listen to podcasts and i recommended your podcast they now go out on leave and listen to your podcast. They were too anxious to go out and leave before. So it's a really positive step in their recovery. It's led to progress in their recovery and helped with their confidence and helping them get back into the community. Through word of mouth here, there are small groups of patients who discuss your podcast and really helps boost their mood. Thank you so much for not only entertaining me on my drives home from work, but also helping others in more ways than you could imagine. Love you both and good luck with the wedding. Rebecca, that's honestly, that is so, uh, that's really lovely. That's made my heart. Yeah, that's really amazing. See, not only do we have poo stories, we also have heart melting stories as well, Soph. This is true. Do you know what's really exciting, Soph? Is that when we started Propose the Pod, the idea was to pick our favourite Propose the Pod from the month and then invite that person on. Love it. So we're now at that stage where we have to pick our favourite. Right, I know who mine is. I know who mine is as well. We've had uh, the the police officer. Yes. Um, proposing the pod to inmates pretty much. We've had the Dashian puppy. We've had that one. The we've, owner proposing it to her Dashian puppy. Her Dashian puppy. We've had um, the one where it went out on the speaker and people heard about you talking about farting. Oh yeah, in the office. Uh, and we've had also Molly May proposing the pod, which oh, is yeah. great. And now we've had Rebecca. So we have to decide on three, one, two, three, who we're going to pick. And then okay. we invite them in to watch a live episode of the podcast. Are you ready for this? Ready. One, two, three. Rebecca. Rebecca. Okay. Oh, we made that for the I same. love that. Yes, that's a really lovely uh, to make people who are struggling with mental health happy and feel less anxious is a really nice thing to. I like that a lot. So Rebecca's going to come on now. If you also want to come and watch a live episode of the podcast, all you got to do is propose the pod. Um, get in touch with us with amazing stories of how you propose the pod. All you got to do is send us uh, into our Instagram at Nearly Weds Podcast or write us an email contact at nearlywedspodcast dot com. Or also, are you yawning as I'm saying I'm this? I'm so sorry, I don't know why. You're yawning as I'm talking about proposing the pod. Carry on. Okay, honey, I will do. And listen, send in loads of stories as well. We want to hear from you to the N same thing. Maybe a little less poo and a little more love. Okay, we love that. But lots of poo as well. That's yeah. the end of... That's the end of... That's the end of... Propose the pod. Listeners' messages. That's the end of... <laughs> listeners' messages. <laughs> so... I just don't get what happens to me. <laughs> it's like I get mind blank every time. That's the end of... Listeners' messages. <laughs> Fucking hell, Sophie. I, I, do you know what? I, I love doing this podcast so much with you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Hey, do you know what else 
loved being on the podcast. Who? Your dad. He did love being on the podcast. He. What, what happened to him the other day? He said that was exciting. Oh, he said he was getting a train and some ladies from Essex called out his name and he said, yes, me. And they asked for a photo with him. Also, we checked out the Instagram of all the messages about your dad. And these are the messages that came in. You ready for this? This is about your dad on Instagram Mm -hmm. from last episode when he came. My future father-in-law. Yes. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, Chloe says, the dad is fit. (laughs) Lucy says, why is no one saying that Sophie's dad is fit? Adam said, Adam said, her dad's well fit. (laughs) Lucky Laney says, uh, am I the only one noticing Sophie's dad is a silver fox? (laughs) Holly, her dad is heart faces. Hannah, if I wrote down the things I would do to Sophie's dad, he'd be banned from TikTok for life. No, no. Will says, daddy her boo though. (laughs) Daryl says, her dad is so fit. Vic, "Mm, Sophie, your dad is fire. (laughs) And what? Sophie's dad though, heart face. Steve's mum, Sophie's dad, Heart face, heart face. Holy shit. Sarah, can we please get rid of Jamie and just have Sophie and her dad? <laughs> I mean, come on. Have you seen him? Gorgeous. <laughs> what the... Oh, my God. Everyone said... I walked in today to do the podcast and someone came up to me who I d- d- don't know and they said, your fiancé's dad is smoking. Do you think he's hot, though? Uh, no. Uh, are you joking? <laughs> can you appreciate he's good looking? I really don't see him like that, but I'm I'm starting to understand that other people do. I don't. He's a he's a hottie. What is going on? He's, he's sixty two. He's a hottie. He's a hottie. Um, very exciting because we have waited for this moment to discuss food at our wedding. Yeah. And we saved this moment for a really special guest. He's a friend of mine. He's now a, he's a, he's going to be a friend of yours. I like him a lot. And I'm going to ask a big question today. We have Tom Kerr, chef, Michelin starred chef. I'm real. He is on TV all the time. He's written books. He's, he's a legend. He's a legend. His chips, oh my God, are the most amazing things I've ever tried in my entire life. And I got a big question to ask him. You ready? I'm ready. Welcome, Tom Kerridge. Ah, Tom, you and I are friends, right? We've we've hung out on podcasts and done bits and bobs before. That's your very polite <laughs> way of saying, no, Jamie, we're not friends. <laughs> yeah, well, it depends what you define as friends, isn't it? Like, we, we're we not hanging out and going for Sunday lunch, are we? Like, We'd we've, love to, though. Yeah. Uh, if you okay. could. And, like, we're friends. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're friends then. Yeah. <laughs> You've just forced him into a friendship. Yeah. We've just met. Yeah, yeah. Uh, six, going down to five. Okay, six, going down to five. <laughs> when's this coming out? <laughs> <laughs> when's it, when's it going out? <laughs> I just, the staff already know, don't worry. <laughs> It's not coming as a surprise just yet. <laughs> okay. So whatever it is, it's a few. We, Sophie and I are getting married next uh, next May. Yeah. 20th of May. I think you should. I'm doing pub in the park that no, day, you mate. Know, I, know, I know what was coming. You know what's coming. You know what's coming. You have no idea what's coming. You have no idea what's coming. No, no, yeah, can do I, I do you, chips you, at you, the wedding? You have no, no, I mean, you have no idea what's coming. Okay. You have no idea what's coming. I was already, I was already with well, that. I, 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 you have no idea what's coming. I also don't know what's coming. You have no idea what's coming. Worried. You said that we're friends. What friends do is they help each other out on wedding days. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. I would give you the honour <laughs> of... Being our chef at our wedding. Wow, that's <laughs> amazing. What do you say to that? Well, I tell you what, I, I'm not going to turn it down. <laughs> Let's look at dates. Let's see what we can do. Have you got, like, I know you've got a venue in a space. and I know Yeah, 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 we've done that. you got that sorted. But have they had to include catering in that? Have no. they? No, no, no. So you haven't got a caterer? No. We haven't got a caterer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, mate. Honestly, we could talk now. Yes, we can talk. Of course we can. What's, <laughs> what's your budget? <laughs> Again, as friends. <laughs> yeah, as friends. Yeah, mates, rates. It's Jamie and Tom coming together. Obviously, Sophie's there as well. Forget the yeah, I was going to I think you're missing the key person here on your wedding day, mate. <laughs> so, would you like Tom to cook for us for our wedding? 
Oh, that would be an absolute honor. No, uh, I think mean, that poor guy actually. Thinks- no, but uh, honestly, I'm 100 percent going. Okay, so so not only have I got six going down to five restaurants, we also have a festival business yeah. and an event company. So the event company does lots of things. At, it does weddings, it does festivals, it does events, it does Hello. big sport. Okay, it does and it does private dinner parties. And so our event company would 100 percent be able to do your wedding. What's the event company called? It's called Lush by Tom Carriage. Lush by Tom <gasps> Carriage. There you go. Wow. And, and do you know? what was so clever there this is proper podcasting because it was like a casual chat but then we plugged it we're really stuck on food yeah okay and food is one of the biggest things when it comes to a wedding it's like okay start a main dessert so if you kind of want what is your vibe that you want to go for no i really don't know so i'd like to ask you i do have a lot of my mum's side of family are vegan why don't we get mini shepherd's pies? And that's what we're going to have. And what did you say, Sophie? I don't think at 12, at midnight is the midnight sat carrying around a mini shepherd's pie is not going to well, work. you can do them different, mate. You can do them really nice individual. You can do, honestly, you Tom. can do loaded chips. You can do... <laughs> loaded things. chips, there I'm with go. you. But you, could, but you, you. could load the chips with the mince topping. You could do it. Like, there's loads of different, like, oh really cool things. You could do little filled jacket potatoes that are like mini fish pies that have done with incredible, like, uh, Spanish seafood. You can do it. I mean, there's so many different amazing things keep you want. Keep going, keep well, going. This is the problem that we have with weddings. So yeah. I've been married, right? So I've been married 23 years next year, right? Wow. So 22 years. What now, did right? you have at your wedding first? Oh, so this is it. So our conversation was about what we're going to do for our wedding. Our wedding was quite a weird one, right? So I'm not religious in any way. So the idea of then going to a church just for pictures didn't work for me. It was just like, <laughs> this, is, this is weird, right? So, so Beth was like, yeah, that's cool. I find it quite weird. The idea that you'd have like this before... Thing that some people were invited to the wedding only and then the party afterwards then you, yeah. you you have second rate guests that can come and have some food <laughs> and then there might even be the third tier of guests that can just come like at eight <laughs> o'clock for the piss up and it's kind of like this was all of this was just like this is just this just not working for me or best so we were like so what should we do so we went with inviting everyone so it's about 250 people in a theater 250 on, people it was like blokes that we know in the pub that you just hang out with and go listen we're getting married on saturday you fancy coming they're like yeah all right it was just like wait like, sorry so you were in the pub and you'd be like you want to come to our, our wedding and they're like yeah right okay yeah, like locals in the pub that you drink in like dave and rob or whoever like didn't even know their second name they're just the ones that talk <laughs> about football all the time no like, formal invitation you just said this yeah is the day and time yeah no, we, we might have given them like a card and went there you go this is where it is <laughs> like but it was just like <laughs> random people to I mean, they're not that random. You kind of know. You know, like the people that you bump into, you go for coffee every morning, right? And you the grab a coffee. The people who are not invited to <laughs> yeah. my wedding. Yeah, those people that aren't invited, they were at mine, right? Completely all-inclusive. We got married there. Mm. Uh, and then every, we got on two double-decker buses, right? We rented we, we rented the buses. We didn't just have to wait at a bus stop 250. <laughs> we rented the buses. and we went, Here comes a double-decker yeah. one, that's we were getting on. And we went to a pub in King's Cross, a place called The Union, <laughs> right? And a pub in King's Cross. And that's where we had our wedding reception and that's the food that we had. And the food we had, we had steak and chips and fish and chips. Like, And it was lots of people stood up grabbing it. It was kind of like set up on a buffet table so everyone could help themselves. There wasn't that formality of sitting down for a free course meal because I've always found like weddings are quite weird because when you go to some wedding venues or some wedding spaces or hotels that specialise in it, mm. They do this structured three course meal and it's always a bit boring. Yes, yeah, boring and the chicken's overcooked and, and it's always chicken because you have to feed because you've got so many people coming yeah. and everyone everyone will eat chicken or a vegetarian yeah, yeah, option. Yeah, and then yeah. you just go Is yeah, that why they, they have, do it? Because, yeah, because it's because always that they're feeding a, for the thousands. It's a feeding for the thousand. Because if you then start tailoring it individual, then the standard completely drops off. The moment that you've got I don't know, 10 tables of 10 and you're trying to send it all out from a kitchen point of view. Everybody wants to eat pretty much the same time. You've got to do the top table first and then everybody else within 10 minutes have got to be eating. Actually, we went backwards as well. We had our cake first. And that wasn't... Well, you really made up the rules of your wedding. Yeah, so with a cake. We had cake yeah, we had the cake for him. The was, <laughs> Yeah, well, we had one of those croque en bouches, right? So one of, a pastry chef friend of mine made the croque en bouche. So, you know, the French ones that's yeah. all filled with fit rolls and yeah. it's like built around like a traffic cone and it's like really high and amazing. And the, But the problem is... The, the wedding and everything overran and the buses didn't get there till late and the sugar began to melt a little bit so the cake was falling over. So we thought we're never going to eat steak and chips and then get to the cake in time. So everyone got there. We went, right, we're having a cake now. Everyone's eating profiteroles. We're doing that first and then we'll go to steak and we're chips not, and fish and chips. We're not going to get to the cake in time <laughs> no, before it melts. So it was a slightly unconventional wedding. It was a little bit back to front and all over the place, but it was really good fun. So I had an idea for Sophie and I. All right. And I said this to you, Sophie. I was like, look, there are so many guests that are going to come. So why don't we do a buffet? How many have you got coming? 
Two hundred. Okay, so yeah, so, so you've got the random bloke from the pub as well, then. I don't know. I have the we have about four hundred cousins. Do, sorry, I do keep saying um, names. A what? I need to maybe blow my nose in a sec, but do I do? Keep... <laughs> you need to, did you whisper that to me? Do you want to blow your Can nose? Can I quickly <laughs> run to the <laughs> She just whispered to me, "I need to blow my nose." Don't worry, honey. Have you got a tissue? No. Have I spoken enough? I just thought everyone was being polite. I thought I had something else on my face. You thought you had something on your face. I thought I had something. I had fluff all over my nose from this jumper, but I thought I had something else. On and my we face. were being polite. I thought you were all being polite. I thought I had like a bogey on my face. I was like, no one's going to tell me. <laughs> Is that what it was? Don't worry, I tell you. That's yeah, what I was so like, would I. Like, I like, yeah, all men that all just being too polite. Mate, you got, got, yeah, yeah, like you, got, you got shit all yeah, over yeah. your face. You got like a thing. Yeah, you got like a thing. Good to know we all know who do that. We should do a buffet. We've got 200 people coming and, oh, Sophie and I can't talk to the guests that much. So why don't we serve the buffet and then we can talk to the guests that come up? Please don't nod. Because that is not a good idea. You don't want to serve a buffet. I mean, I, don't, I, I, I won't want to be serving at my wedding. Yeah. No, I kind of get that. I mean, serving two hundred people does take a while. Like, not me. However, not me. <laughs> slopping it out. It's not slopping yeah. it out. But well, there and also, are how points. quickly can you talk to everyone? Everyone in the queue would be like, "Can you hurry it, up?" Yeah, this is the problem. They would want to talk. To you. However, you could put yourself at a particular station of it, right? So you could do there it. You so you could do it when it comes to dessert. So yeah. I don't know what you decided to do. Maybe I don't know. It was something like eating mess or something that you could just be slopping out big, big bowls of jelly. Yeah. So you could be. So everyone's. You've done their bit. They've eaten. They're coming. They're coming for dessert at different times. If you had to, in your head, uh, design a a sort of wedding menu, what would you kind of say is the vibe? What would you say? Okay, this is what I'd go for. You're a young, fun couple that like uh, I, I sexy think, as well. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, yeah. So the menu's got to be sexy. It's got to have <laughs> uh, like luxury items on it. It's got. <laughs> it's got. And clearly, if we're going to do it, it's got to be expensive, right? So. <laughs> so <laughs> So, Happy R and M. Yeah, yeah, Every yeah, star yeah, doing yeah. That premium you're yeah, going to add yeah, on. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but the, the reality is, you're both a really energetic couple. You could set up different spaces in a great big room and have it as food trucks, or do it as different. Like I like of, the food trucks. Yeah. I don't know about our serving. I'm going to put it out that I don't think I'm going to want to be standing in my heels. <laughs> In your wedding dress. In my wedding dress, splattering food on my... Not going to splatter, we will put a bib on you, it'll be fine. But I like food trucks. I really like food trucks. I thought, because we're also doing a day two, a pool party thing, I feel like... Oh, yeah, we haven't told you that. You also have okay. to cater for a day two. We can do day two, that's no <laughs> I problem. I thought... <laughs> what, like a tacos great big... and... Yeah, amazing. And that would be great for the chips with the mince meat. So the and... tacos, right? Are you doing that, like... A bit like beautiful beef tacos cooked on charcoal. We like have it. no idea what we're doing. Oh, we oh, do, we don't know. Give it, give it to us. Pork, Honestly, so one of the best. Exactly. So you do this slow cook. Whatever so you say, morning, we're going for. Okay. So the Sorry. next morning, the chefs are coal fired, like outdoor barbecue style, like a Spanish style asador mm. with all the coals cooking. And then you start cooking slow cooked pieces of beef and you get a hickory smoke it and you get all these flavors, chop it all up. And then you start doing tacos. And then when people come, and like it becomes this like, early afternoon and goes all the way through late at night and you just keep feeding fire and keep putting pieces <gasps> of meat on it and just get, and just keep going all night long. Like, yeah. And then you just have this amazing, like, Spanish-style acetal thing that's outdoors by a pool. Everyone having an amazing time. And that fatty pork, is it? Secreto, and they put that yeah, and they put uh, it Yeah, over. amazing. Ooh. And then you can have lots of little potatoes that are sat in the coals, but underneath so the fat's dripping off and all oh this beautiful flavour. and all. Like, he's you always back do... to chips. He's all he's yeah, back to yeah, he's exactly. always back to the potatoes. But there's so many that's incredible delicious. things. But all of that, look, yeah. So you, I'm excited by that. You're excited by that. None of that sounded like the formality of a wedding, did it? Mm -hmm. None of that sounded like you turn up, like you know, have a chicken skewer thing when you turn up and then you sit down on a laid tablecloth with the really cheap chairs that have got the kind of like cover, cover on them, cover on them that are multi stackable because they're easy to put away off of the venue afterwards. Like there's no character in that. You're and, so but, but right. It, it so just right. sucks the life out of everything. You want a party vibe that feels like it's going to keep going and it's got great energy. And you can do so much of that with the way that you serve the food. You know, if you have a good budget to that, if you don't have a budget, if you're sort of working with like, you're doing like a wedding, you don't really have a budget, then how do you make that work? You don't need a massive budget. It depended on the ingredients you use. You could do whole grilled lobsters and you could serve scallops in the shell with caviar on it if you wanted to. Delicious. Or, yeah, but also you could do like uh, very simple rump steaks or minute steaks that are cooked on there. You can do burgers. You can do incredible like mm. Polish style smoked sausages that are cooked sliced with sauerkraut into so you can that kind of vibe you yeah. can create it doesn't matter on the ingredient you can still create 
the vibe, the fun, the space. The ingredient is the thing that brings a cost. What, the moment you start having to have loads of waiting staff serving lots of tables all of the time, that's where the cost comes in. It's a labour cost, actually. If you shrink it down and everybody can help themselves and they come backwards and forwards and they're, you know, they've got to have napkins and eat with their hands, all of a sudden that cost comes down, but the ingredient, the fun, the food that you're eating goes up. Go back to the coal thing. You could do, bless you. <laughs> bless you. It, you got on? a bogey you on your face. <laughs> 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 at the same time <laughs> so you could do a shepherd's pie but you do a really beautiful put together big mm. one right that goes into the middle of each table and then everyone helps themselves Middle. or you do the big pies at midnight you know whilst everyone's sat down <gasps> and then they've had a few beers and done whatever else and then you do a great big selection of pies that go no out that's genius that's genius see that's genius yeah, but you, <gasps> but what you... about having a caravan that comes out in mid at midnight, a pie and mash thing, and you get it in like the little takeaway. Where's the caravan everyone, coming from? You just have it parked there. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to use the caravan. You can just you, you can have a caravan if you want. Uh, if you want to, why, why do you want a caravan because to make it more you know, rustic? You know, like pie and mash, like yeah. or like a fish and chips van. Fish and chip van would be amazing. Problem with fish and chips is very hard because you need proper fryers for two hundred people. That's a lot. That's big fryers. It's not just like a little tabletop one. That's so like a proper. Pie. So pies are much better because you can get them done through the oven. They're roasted. They're done. They're beautiful. Can you have my name in the top of the pie? We can definitely do that. Oh my god! Your name? Yeah. And your name? Yeah. (laughs) You're gonna save your Jamie pies. You get you get proper stamps made, right? (gasps) So that you can stamp into the pastry. So as we bake it, we could do Jamie and Sophie pies. What we could get is my face stamped on the pies. Well, both of our faces. (laughs) Let's get both. Both of our faces kissing. No, no, no. Everyone is going to be trying to vomit whilst he's eating What I love about that is the first thing is my face on a pie. Both of your faces. My face on a pie. This is what I deal with all the time. (laughs) Exhausting. If you had to quickly give a start of main dessert, what you would do for our wedding, go. The beginning stuff you do like cold meat, charcuteries, that sort of stuff. Pickles, very easy, hot, oh, hot, yes. hot sourdough, like things like that. Beautiful butter, really easy to help yourself pickly stuff. Main courses, now it depends on where you want to go, but I would do something like a slow cooked whole animal and then dessert well it's completely up to you one of the best weddings i've been to is when someone actually just put in a self-serve ice cream machine so you just you you have it there so then they had a great big selection of all the toppings that you wanted well i kind of like the idea like of doing something fun like obviously churros cake you know or churros van again why am i so why did you like these vans but the idea of the churros thing that's something that you could do at midnight. So there, when we do the okay. pie and mash and then the Desserts. pudding, oh my. it's churros with hot chocolate and caramel sauce. Sorry. Oh do you know what I mean? So then, so then, be all over that. Yeah, it'd be the most delicious thing in the world. Yeah. Uh, what do you think the secret to a happy marriage is? I think when you, you meet the right person, and it's really weird to say it, but you you know, like, you, you just kind of know. Like, Beth asked me if I'd marry her. Like, I didn't oh, propose wow. to Beth, she proposed to me. And that was after about six weeks of being with each other. And you Shut just kind of... Get yeah, out of here. Yeah, That's yeah, incredible. Yeah, in the middle of Leicester Square, at about 1.30 in the morning, I just finished work. I was working in, just off Leicester Square at the time, and she come down from up north and met us that evening. And we used to... She used to meet us from the restaurant, and we'd go out really late at night on a Saturday. And then, I like... And she asked us then, and you just know instantly. It was just mm. like, yeah, it was great. And so... For our success in, in terms of marriage has been because we both have separate lives. Also, I'm hardly ever at home. So so I'm I'm also a chef, so I'm away early in the morning and I'm not back till late at night. But that's actually... So you don't really see each other. Yeah, but you don't get those... You're not yeah. in that normal, yeah. dull, boring routine of things. So when you do see each other and you are hanging out, every moment feels quite cool and quite special. So normal things that people go... Oh yeah, Wednesday it's we go for a curry or so and so. I go to the gym and the, she goes and meets her friends or like you know that normal routine yeah. that people get. We haven't yeah. got that at all. So every week is something quite interesting and different, and it's still like that. Twenty twenty three years nearly. Well, we've been together twenty five, twenty six years. So it's it's like it's a long time of being together. So I think it's it's understanding each other's spaces. Yeah, not living underneath each other, like being there all the time forging out your own paths and your own careers of what you do and allow and some being supportive that's probably the key to success i, I think. love that yeah that deserves a clap we need Thanks, to take mate. note what do you mean we need to take note i'm the most loving delightful fiance in the world and i tell yeah, you what on a wedding it. day right the yeah. best bit of advice that i was given on a wedding day and it was brilliant because we paid attention to it and it made so much sense 
when we look back at it, is actually on the wedding day, find each other every hour or every two hours where the two of you just stand back from everybody just on your own and look and look at all those people because that's the photograph that you get. That's the bit that you remember. Nay, I really appreciate you you coming. I know how busy you are. What else have you got coming on at the moment? Uh, we've got the food festivals cracking on next year, the pub in the park stuff, which is Amazing. massive. We've got, you know, a couple of TV shows that are coming out next year. We've got That's loads so of... We'll only say yes to things that are good fun. Your wedding sounds like it'll be good fun. Well, well we now know if you don't do it, it's not going to be good fun. So that's <laughs> it. So you have to do it. Tom, <laughs> I now know that if Gordon Ramsay undercuts us, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. when he pinches all my ideas. Yeah, you have to actually go now. Gordon's coming on. So <laughs> hurry up and get out, Tom. Appreciate it. Tom, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much thank for coming you on. So much. Thank you so much. Special thanks for having us, guys. Oh, man. Oh, thank you Tom, so much. You absolute pleasure. So, if, I'm not even joking. Hey, we're going to get Tom Carriage to come cook at our wedding. Poor guy, he's got three cameras poking in his face yes. and my headphones on, and he knows it's going to get broadcast. He can't exactly say no. He's yeah. a very, very busy man, and I have more respect for people than you do to a better <laughs> etiquette than you do to ask. Do you want him to cook at our wedding? Well, yes, please. So, so then Tom. you've got to ask these. But I'm going to write him a private letter well, begging him you're to. You're going to write him a letter? Yes. Why don't you give a message down the camera to him? No, quick. I'm not going to do that. Just do it? No. Okay. That well. is really embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, all right. I'm just so excited to have him on the, uh, at the wedding. So it's actually can't speak. All right. Hey, it's now time for wed men. <laughs> I I just don't know. I oh actually apologise. You just it's said almost like wed. I, I, I said, don't know. I said, I've got a lot of wed men going on in the moment. In I mind. said wed. wedding favours. <laughs> I said wed and Stop you Stop scratching your balls. What's wrong with you? I just said wed and you went men. <laughs> it's now time for wed you men, wed men. Wed you rather. All right. It's now time for Are you ready? It's now time for <laughs> what the hell? I love you uncontrollably. Oh gosh. I love you uncontrollably. I, we've spoken about this. I don't like loads of unnecessary mm. signs of affection. It is now time for Wed You Rather. Okay, question today, Safe. Yeah, go on here. Wed You Rather. Yeah. You find out that you or I have slept with one of our friends before we started dating and I, and I never told you, you never told me. Okay, right. Or when you're at the altar, we say our ex's name to each other. 100% you slept with one of my mates. At that, if you said your ex's name at the altar, I would marry you to save embarrassment and then I would call a lawyer straight away and get a divorce before the day had even been over. And I would I, I would hurt you physically. I, I can't. How would you hurt me physically? I would, with like a ham on America <laughs> around the head. What would you for? Like, honestly, I'm even angry thinking about that. In front of all those people, you go, yes, I do. If you came up and, at the altar and by mistake said your ex's name, I'd be like, oh, whatever. Fine, all right, I'll do it. No, no, you can't do it on purpose. I might do it. Well, so you'd rather that then? Then Good you job. shag one of my mates and haven't told me. Yeah, but before we went out, who gives a fuck? Also, I... then I can hold that over you forever. See what I'm thinking there? Sorry, you malicious cow. That is, that is no... Okay, wait, wait, wait. So you want me to stand up in front of everyone and go, and they go, do you, Sophie, take Jamie? I would go, do you, Sophie, take Beep? Who would it be? Well, I've only had a couple of exes, so one, one of those. If you find out you slept with one of my friends and never told me. Oh, if I found out that you slept with one of my friends and didn't tell me. Yes, I would prefer it. That's my choice. I don't want you embarrassing me in front of everybody. So you wouldn't, okay. The likelihood is that you have slept so with one of my friends so and you... haven't told me, Jamie, if who? I'm totally who? honest. Probably one girl who is going to, there's probably a number of girls who are at our When did I slept with your sister and I never told you? Well, I would never speak to either of you again, but I mean, that's not my friend. I guarantee okay, I, I, that say, there'll say, be say, a, few, a fair few girls at my wedding. I can name a few right now that you've had sex with. Yes, but that, you can't say the same for me, you mister. Yes, I can. Oh, get over yourself, you can't. <laughs> filthy, so filthy liar. They always end up in arguing, these ones. That's the end of... Where'd you are? They? Ready, Queenie Cat? Yeah, <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Okay, so we now have wedding favours. Yes, we you do. You up for that? I'm up for that. We've got one from Becca Chin. Chin Chinny. Chin Chinny is her Instagram name if you want to <laughs> check her out. Well, hello there, Jamie and Sophie. Sophie and Jamie. Oh, I'm finally getting around to messaging you about a fun, very personalised thing that we did at my wedding. 
I know it might sound crazy, but I'm a 90s kid and love a party game. So I made a pass the parcel for each of the tables at the reception. So when everybody sat down as a fun way to get them all interacting as we started it off with the game of pass the parcels. There were fun little bits in each layer like party poppers and those balloons that you blow up and let go and they scream and fly around the room. I also put a scratch card in a random layer for each table so that everybody would hopefully want it to land on them. In the middle layer was a box of chocolates for each table to share and also a little quiz for them to guess the meaning of the table games. I love that idea. That's so nice, isn't it? I do like that idea. I think it's a really fun idea. I think that is a fun idea. You've got to have a small type of wedding though to do past the parcel because going around 200 people would be... It's, it would, it's still great there though. wouldn't be enough parcels no but I like it it's very cute and lots of people have smaller weddings I love the fact with the wedding favours what we get to do is we get to have all of these ideas and put them together and then we get to pick what we want at the end how great is that remember to get in touch at contact at nillyweddspodcast.com go and message us on uh, Instagram at nillyweddspodcast hey we're also on YouTube so you can go and watch our videos go watch them go watch them hey anyone getting engaged good luck anyone getting married congratulations anyone thinking about proposing Go for it. And we'll see you next Monday. Goodbye. I love you, Sophie. I love you, listeners. (laughs) Bye.